demonstration, if you have a small piece of wood you need to trim and you're not, you don't feel like setting up a tail vise or a component, you can use it as a small plane and stuff like so, if you're careful enough. So the only, uh, the only caveat is the fact that the fence, the height of the fence itself, of course it's a variable height. I've selected this to be about an inch how tall, but your, the board you're planing would have to be taller than the one inch with an allowance to keep it from slicing into the fence. For example, if I'm, if I'm cutting smaller pieces like this at 45, Degree cut, I would have exactly dead on at 45, and so is this this other component. So, and they're uh, fairly well trimmed, they're fairly fine. This have a like this, for example, you'll never get an accurate cut like this. You can on a table saw or in a band saw, but it's uh, some it's uh, the damage you do to the piece, the amount of uh, wood you remove because of the large, wide. Uh, Thick curves, I should say, on a table saw and bandsaw, and the, the rough surface that leaves, it's just not worth it. So I highly recommend you build your own, you make your own uh, bench hooks, make make a couple. Okay, I'm going to use a small smoother, I'm not sure if it's adjusted, but I'll find out fairly quickly. So. Notice I have it skewed. So this is ideal, you can see the width of the shavings, exactly the, almost the the width of the board. So this is a very inexpensive plane that's widely available and if properly sharpened and adjusted it works really well as you can see. That's a beautiful shaving. Let's see if it works with this plane also. It's oh, beauty. So if I tap it at the back, lock it, it'll be the process. Example, when I remove the lever cap, the, uh, the actual frog sits at 45 degrees. You can't purchase uh, higher angle frogs. This particular plane is exactly 40. So just reassemble this. You need to be very careful when you reassemble this so you don't nick the, uh, the edge of the blade. So set the uh, lateral adjustment lever and uh, lever cap so everything sits straight. Just the beginning of the adjustment, and once once I've done that, then I can go ahead and and adjust the uh, depth of the blade. It means a complete cheek. So this is an example of how to do this. So this uh, actual uh, rabbiting plane, a small rabbiting plane of a specialty plane. On the subject of specialty planes, I wanted to show you uh, something uh, interesting. One of the most interesting hand planes around. This is. Uh, this plane was, was a culmination of technology of uh, hand planes, specifically uh, specialty planes of the late 19th century. So this, uh, this plane, the era for this plane was late 1800s to early 1900s, and they threw everything into this plane. So it's a, it's a multi-use plane. It's a Stanley 45, and you can adjust depth, you can adjust, you can use it as a shoulder plane, you can use it as a rabbiting plane, and uh, with interchangeable bits. So this was the uh, predecessor to, uh, to a contemporary router, for example. This was scrapers, and these are, these are scrapers which uh, you can handheld scrape. I'll just give you an example of how they work. So you would uh, sort of uh, bend the scraper, and you can actually you can actually go forward or backward. I prefer to go forward, so I'm actually scraping now. And uh, what scrapers do is they also these long enough they uh, they tend to get hot, so you need to back off or wear gloves. You need more control, and the likelihood of tear out is is non-existent with this. And that's one of the reasons uh, I use this in my own work. Uh, I tend to use highly figured woods. I'm taking shavings off. You need to be careful not to rock the plane, and that's why, as I mentioned earlier, the one of the uh, criteria of a plane should be fairly uh, deep sole, uh, so it doesn't it, it'll tend not to rock. Once uh, once the momentum 
of, a, of the hand plane is established, the actual shooting process is pleasant and simple. The initial blade depth adjustment is minimally set with, with very small adjustments to get it just right. So what I, what I normally do is I start with a very small, so it doesn't take too much of a bite out of the end. The goal is to start from the edges using the number six four plane. Light or thin shavings off the end, and you, my end is exactly at 90 degrees. With the blue tape, this is the part that that is not uh, that the actual sole of the plane, the portion I've shown just before with the blue tape, rides over. So this this prevents uh, further wear or further trimming of the both fence and upper portion of the baseboard beyond a certain point. So when uh, when the uh, as you keep increasing the depth of the the blade, you keep refraining from doing that too much. I would just go do is uh, when I get hold of a small block plane and I, I create a small from blowing out this area from blowing out and it's uh, it's 45 degrees from one end to the other now. And that now and it's, uh, it's end of a board. This uh, for a small board like this is very difficult using conventional table saw or even a bandsaw for an attachment for. Uh, for both the uh, right hand, the right hand shooting board, and the left hand shooting board, I would set it up. This, everything is identical, aside from the. Uh, and I can actually probably flip this over, and it would work just as well. And I can probably flip this over, and it would work just as well on that shooting board. The components for the uh, baseboard and lower runway base are pre-cut to dimensions specified in the plans, uh, available on my website. The components and full dimensions of the shooting board are specified in the illustrated drawings included in the plan.